In first three parts of AVR at mega 32 timers, we have already seen block diagram of timer 0 as well as various registers associated with timer 0 and their functionality. In this part, we are going to look at timer programming steps. First of all, let us understand certain terminology associated with on time, off time and duty cycle. If we look at any square wave or any pulses, when pulses are at logic high, we can consider that as on time, T on. When pulse is logic low, we can consider that as T off, that is off time. T on plus T off, that is called total time. Or we can consider that as one cycle. So usually this period or a one cycle that is nothing but 1 divided by frequency of oscillation. Duty cycle we can define as it is on time divided by total time. Usually we represent duty cycle in percentage. So T on divided by total time into 100 will give us duty cycle in percentage. If frequency of oscillation is given, we can identify time period for one cycle. If time period is given, we can identify frequency of oscillation. Even from duty cycle, we can identify how much time will be on time and how much time will be off time. The meaning of 50% duty cycle is on time and off time both are equal. In case of 75% duty cycle, for 3 fourth cycle, pulse will be at logic high and for 1 fourth cycle, pulse will be at logic low. So, for 75% of time, pulse will be at logic high. 25% duty cycle is on time is just one fourth and off time is three fourths. So, based on on time and off time, we can identify what is duty cycle. And if duty cycle is given in percentage, we can identify what will be the actual waveform. First of all, let us look at timer zero programming steps in normal mode. Timer zero is eight bit timer. First of all, count value is loaded into TCNT zero register. In second step, TCR0 register, that is timer counter control register is loaded with mode and prescaler operation. In normal mode, timer starts to count in upward direction on each tick when clock source is selected. After that, keep monitoring the timer overflow flag, that is TOV0 flag. Once this TOV0 flag is set, stop the timer by disconnecting clock. In next step, clear the TOV0 flag for a next round. And one can go back to step 1 to load count again for the next round of operation. In case of normal mode, timer count up by incrementing TCNT0 register. So suppose if TCNT0 register is 0, then there will be maximum count with that specific iteration. TCNT0 will count from 0 to FF hex in upward direction. The moment it reaches to FF hex, it will rolls over and it will go back to zero. This is the point where timer overflow flag will be set 
and from this point onwards count will become zero and again next cycle can be started. Suppose if we consider that count is loaded with other value than zero. For example, let us assume that count is loaded with fc hex. So in that case, it will count from fc to fd, fe and ff. Once it will reach to ff, it will rolls over to 00. zero. You can observe initially when the count is started from fc, at that time timer overflow flag is 0, but the moment counter is rolls over, timer overflow flag will become 1. Let us consider a few examples. Find timer's clock frequency and time period with crystal frequency 10 MHz, 8 MHz and 1 MHz. And assume there is no prescaler used. So as we know, we can identify time period based on equation Time period equals to 1 divided by frequency. Here crystal frequency is 1. So suppose if crystal frequency is 10 megahertz, then timer clock is going to be 10 megahertz because no prescaler is used. So in that case, time period for one clock tick will be 0 0.1 microsecond. For 8 megahertz crystal, Time period for one clock tick is going to be 0 0.125 microsecond. And in case of one megahertz clock, period is going to be one microsecond. Suppose if 256 is used as a prescaler, in that case, crystal frequency is divided by 256. So if crystal frequency is 16 megahertz then timer clock that is 16 megahertz divided by 256 so it is 62.5 kilohertz so based on this timer clock now time period that is 1 divided by 62.5 kilohertz that is nothing but 16 microsecond similarly instead of 16 megahertz if 8 megahertz is crystal frequency, then timer clock will be 31.25 kilohertz and time period will be 32 microsecond. So CPU crystal frequency and timer clock that is useful in identifying time period for any timer. Now let us understand how we can identify value of TCCR 0 resistor. So suppose if we want to use timer 0 in normal mode without prescaler, in that case first of all we can consider all the value of TCCR 0 as shown in this snapshot. FOC 0 fill will be 0 in case of mode, we are using normal mode. So this WGM00 and WGM01 bits are going to be 00. In normal mode, compare output mode is also normal. So we are going to keep bit number 4 and 5 as 00. There is no prescaler. So our clock source selector, these three bits are going to be 00. One. So, we can fill our TCCR register with all 8-bit values and based on that we can say to use timer 0 in normal mode without prescaler, the value is going to be 0, 1. Let us consider one more example to use timer 0 in fast PWM mode without prescaler. Now, suppose if we are using fast PWM mode, then WGM bits are going to be 1, 1, but compare output mode bits will be 0, 0, and due to no prescaler, clock select bits will be 0, 0, 1. So this will result into TCCR0 as 49 hex.
Let us consider a few more examples with prescaler. Use timer 0 in normal CTC mode with prescaler 64. So, again in this case, WGM bits they are CTC mode, so it will be 0, 1. But compare output mode that is going to be normal. So, COM01 and COM00 bits are 00. zero. Prescaler is 64. So, CS bits are going to be 0, 1, 1. So, by putting bits into TCCR register, the result is going to be 0, B, hex. Suppose if we wants to use timer 0 in phase correct PWM mode with prescaler 8, then WGM bits are going to be 1, 0. Com bits will be 0, 0. And due to prescaler 8, CS bits are going to be 0, 1, 0. So this is going to result into 42 hex. Once Steps of programming are clear and how to initialize TCCR register is understood. Then one can start writing program for generating square wave of various frequency or variable duty cycle or we can start using timer in PWM or in CTC mode. It is also possible to generate a predefined time period using timer 0. So in next part we will understand how we can generate various waveforms and how actually we can do timer programming.